Nine up, ten up. This is a Marine. Twelve up, thirteen. But this is not boot camp. Get ready. We are on a journey to health and wellness. Glalkanta is your guide. Exercise one, down and up two, I believe in you three. His mission is whipping one of Oklahoma City's unhealthiest communities into shape. I just love the fact that we're in the heart of the community. Uh, it's time to bring fitness to the people, not the other way around. We eat together, we pray together now. It's time for us to exercise together. Every Tuesday and Thursday, an hour of simple exercises past the time. You're still moving. Oh yeah, I'm motivated, fired up, ready to do some more work. Bilal will tell you there's no dancing here, no gimmicks, just old-fashioned fitness with some philosophy. Can you eat your dinner out of the gas station? We don't eat our dinner out of the gas station. People get upset about FAT, but you got to call it what it is. So if you're sick and out of shape, uh, it's time to get in shape. First, it was about a dozen older men. The camaraderie is just unspeakably great. Then the wives found out. Because God gave us these bodies, he made them to last, and we've got to make that happen. And pretty soon the kids were coming too. Because I want to live over 100 years at least. And now on the northeast side, the Douglas High Cafeteria is barely large enough for more than 80 people looking to change their lives, not to mention the results. You're losing weight and you're feeling good and you're eating properly. And having fun. Feels good! I believe they can feel the passion. A passion for a healthier and longer life. Lauren Fultonberg, News Channel 4. Now, your legs, your back, and your... We've got Charlie Christian there, um, Joan Crawford, and we've also got Woody Guthrie here as well. So, yeah, they're the local legend. What else you did that? Yeah, bro. Thanks, brother. It's taken me probably about four days now. It probably would have been a lot quicker if I had the lift, the lift on the first day, but I've just been using mostly ladders. My original intent was to come over and do a tribute portrait of Prince. 15 hour flight, uh, I might as well try and pop over to Oklahoma and do one of uh, Stephen Adams. And I got uh, invited by uh, my friends Melody and Mark again to come back. City? Absolutely, yep. I've got uh, too many friends here now, so yeah. <laughs> I really loved Oklahoma. Everybody knew my dad. The memories are fresh. Me, my dad, and my sister. The dirt That's is dad. fresher. I said, I love you and I'll miss you forever. Buried hours ago is Lindsay Bale's dad, Roger, or Rocky, yeah. <laughs> That's what they called him. But there's no headstone for Rocky, squeezed unexpectedly between family plots. Well, I never thought I'd lose my daddy. It, it shouldn't have happened like this. Police stopped Roger Bales for a bad taillight, and he pulled over into a liquor store parking lot. But then for some reason, Bales got out of the car and started running across the street toward a gas station. He couldn't have gotten very far or very fast. He only made it about a block before Ponca City officers tased him. Paramedics took Bales to the hospital where he died the next day. What could have been so important that you got out and ran? Maybe it was drugs hospital records show were in his system. Maybe it was a significant criminal record featuring prison time for drugs, theft, and running from police. But still. There's just no reason for this. For the way police brought Rocky Bales down. When I could push my dad over. You know, he was 56 and he was having liver and kidney problems. He had just found out he had a heart condition. Now Lindsay's heart is hurting. This kind of force on an old man is not okay. He was not hurting them. He was not, he was trying to get away from them. Just how Lindsay is now trying to get away from a pain that may not ever rest in peace. Man, it was crazy. How could this happen? I really thought someone hit the house with a car. The destruction, the devastation. You remember everything about it. Still hard. It's like, you don't see this. For Devin Woods. This something you, you don't even see this in movies. To believe. Like, it's crazy, just to describe it. I mean, I remember being out here the day it happened, and you still see the mattress, you still see the Everything, glass. everything's here. Cereal well, boxes, yeah. trash. Harder to believe how time stands still exactly six months after an explosion in El Reno. It's just sitting there the same as it was yeah
with little progress and little luck figuring out how it happened. We weren't able to. The El Reno Fire Department tried, but could only trace it to the basement. The house was lifted up off of the stem wall slash foundation and picked up. Natural gas wasn't the cause. Was it methane? Was it a, um, a gasoline? We weren't able to determine that for sure. So we have to come to the conclusion that it's undetermined. You don't want to make a pretty sure guess on anything. Um, this has a lot to do with their lives and, and insurance, and you want to be sure. The fire department the promises somebody. the families here are safe. For a while, we Maybe. didn't turn on the heater. Even if their sense of safety is shattered. Just because everybody that's in your house, that could happen to that, and you still don't know what's wrong with this. Especially with a pretty powerful reminder there in plain sight. We had a tremendous victory tonight. With the new face of the Republican Party headed toward the nomination, the possibility of a Donald Trump presidency is entering the picture in Oklahoma. And for the party in power, there are two sides to that coin. You cannot ignore the good policies this man is pushing. State Senator Ralph Shorty wants to see Trump at the head of the U.S. government because of policy, not personality. I believe Mr. Trump is the right guy at the right time. He's, he's going to pull us out of this mess. But those on the flip side of the Trump coin see the businessman as chump change. I have to sleep at night. I have a daughter. You know, I can't support someone who lacks the, the basic human decency um, that Mr. Mr. Trump does. Senator David Holt won't be voting for Hillary Clinton either, but he certainly won't support the GOP nominee. He's not competent to be president. He's wrong on the issues. He's not a conservative. Um, he lacks human decency. And maybe worst of all, he speaks like he's a dictator. Governor Mary Fallon put her two cents in Wednesday, saying she's behind Donald Trump 100 percent because he would be a conservative president who will promote a pro-business climate to create good jobs and is strong on national defense. The governor says she's focused on the budget, not rumors of the vice presidency. There's and even Trump supporters say that's uh, best. I have a lot of respect for our governor, but I just think that, uh, that Mr. Trump would be better served elsewhere. But in a potentially toss-up election, Shorty says the face at the top of the ticket is most important. No more turnpikes! They turned out with signs, came ready with chants. No more turnpikes! Handed out shirts and profanity-laced rants. I'm gonna fight this son of That's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fight him. Tonight's third and final reveal for the new Eastern Oklahoma County Turnpike gave residents an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with engineers. So what you can see here will be interchanges. And though the engineers were instructed not to speak with the media, plenty of these people wanted their voices heard. I think this is a politician's way to pull the wool over everybody's eyes. This isn't right. The final map has been months in the making, deviating slightly from previously considered routes. The Oklahoma Turnpike Authority claims it'll affect 80 rooftops in the end, which includes the roof over Johnny Schofield. They changed it, it's going right through my house. My house where my kids basically raised, rode ponies all their life, uh, over 30 years. Our memories. Though the meeting was filled with a vocal majority, some see the turnpike as a chance for change, an opportunity okay, for innovation. I'm ready to sell. Ready to sell? What do you mean? I'm ready to sell my property. Let's, let them build the turnpike. So you're for the turnpike? Totally. Still others continue their fight as time runs out. OTA says, oh, it's a done deal. I, I, I always tell them when it's a done deal. It's a lot easier to shop online. A click of the mouse, a tap of the keyboard, and Lane Ferguson has the clothing and the books he needs without going outside. It's just easier than going out to a mall or going to the bookstore and usually cheaper. But the problem is it's selling the state short too. There's definitely a big loss there from uh, sales tax collections from internet sales. Only 4% of Oklahomans pay up, and last OKC counted, it was short $15 million a year in unpaid internet taxes. Instead of being in a cut, we'd be able to add back uh, things. Like police officers, firefighters, and fixes for the roads. These are all services that the citizens need and, and deserve, uh, and we just don't have the money to provide as much as we'd like. Local businesses feel the law leaves them hanging, too. It's tough to compete with merchandise you can essentially buy tax-free online. We have to collect that. We're a burden to collect that. It's by law. Can you blame Steve Schlegel for feeling like he's spinning his wheels, trying to keep up with price cuts he can't make? The government is basically uh, playing favorites at the moment by directing sales to, to the internet rather than uh, by giving them an unfair advantage. Now a state lawmaker wants to level the playing field, requiring out-of-state internet businesses to send a letter home at tax time to tell you how much you owe. 
which yeah, may be a pain. It's actually you have to pay that, but I think it's fair. But Lane plans to keep shopping.